I'm Dan Linstead, and today I'm going to take a 50,000 foot view at the uh, analytic architectures that we use in business intelligence. In this presentation, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Kimball two-tier architecture and some of the questions that it raises. We'll also discuss the Inman three-tier architecture and some of the questions that it brings to mind, along with hard and soft business rules, how the data vault plays in this space, uh, and what it brings to the table. And then we'll finish it up with a definition of what a data warehouse is and hopefully what a data mart is, uh, as well as where it applies and, and, and what it means. So let's start out with the Kimball two-tier architecture. We've got the sources on the left. You're all very familiar with this. The batch and the business rules in the middle. Uh, the staging area followed by the data warehouse. Kimball defines the data warehouse as a conglomeration of conformed dimensions and conformed facts. And that brings a lot of questions to the table. Do I need a persistent staging area for raw history? Uh, what if I need conform staging tables? Do I conform uh, data on the way into the stage or do I do it on the way into the data marts or the dimensional models which make up the warehouse? How do I conform data across geographical regions or time zones, occurrences, countries, um, all that different kind of thing? How do I get an enterprise view from this data which may or may not conform and in fact may actually be needed at certain business levels? So let's take a look at some of the questions that this kind of an architecture, whether it's Kimball two-tier or data warehousing two-tier architecture, which is pretty widely acceptable, what kinds of questions does this drive? Well, first question is, what exactly is a data warehouse? How do we define it? And, and, and how do we treat it as an enterprise resource? Right? How do I handle real-time feeds? If I've got the business rules upstream, either on the way into the staging area or going from the stage into this uh, logical data warehouse, how do I deal with real-time feeds in conjunction with these business rules that are executing? And a lot of times these business rules, they run long, they run uh, slow, they require a lot of deep analysis inside of the warehouse in order to execute properly. Sometimes they require latency or, uh, excuse me, they require other source systems to be available. So there's availability issues and timing issues. Uh, how do I decouple changes, and that's business changes, from the IT or technology of re-engineering and the impacts that go with it? How do I keep those uh, changes from impacting multiple loading cycles and costing lots and lots of money every time the business wants a change? It seems like IT takes longer and longer to deliver, uh, and it gets harder and harder to do. Uh, how do I handle big data and unstructured data? So in a two-tier architecture, really, especially in this one, there's no room for big data or no SQL solutions or anything like that. So how do I deal with that kind of thing, right? And then there's always the question, where does my mousetrap go? I've got a new widget. I've got an appliance that I just bought, um, a data mart appliance, so to speak, or a flat wide store like Natiza. Where do, where do I put it? Does it replace my enterprise data warehouse? Do I split off some of the conformed dimensions and, and, and facts that are having problems in performance? And do I, when I when I split them off to put them in the in the new mousetrap or the new widget, does that mean that I end up with siloed solutions? Lots of different questions come from this. What if the costs to conform data uh, get too large to handle, or IT is just simply taking too long to deliver? How do I deal with this? How do I manage disparate dimensional models? All these questions really are driven from two things. They're driven from the business rules being upstream of your enterprise data warehouse. And they're driven from these uh, purposes of the need to conform your data going into your data warehouse. Not only make it usable by business, but uh, conform it. So getting rid of a lot of the raw data, getting rid of a lot of different things. Well, what I've discovered over the years is you really need a different architecture from the get-go to make these things work, to answer these questions properly. That architecture happens to be a three-tier architecture. Now, does that mean that it's an Inman three-tier architecture? No, I don't think so. It's just really, truly a three-tier architecture. And by three tiers, what I'm talking about is you need some form of staging area. As long as you have external feeds or XML files or batch type systems delivering data in a batch world, even a micro or mini batch, you're going to need some sort of staging area to put that data together. 
It might be relational, it might not. It might even be a NoSQL appliance. Then you need a data warehouse, not an information warehouse, but you need a data warehouse. And that's really where the data vault model sits. You see the DV2 at the bottom there. That's where the data vault model sits. And you need that uh, information organized by business key. And in another video, we'll talk about what that means and how you find business keys and all kinds of things um, at an executive level. Then you go into the data marts, and this is really the function of delivery. How do you get this data out to business users fast? So this three-tier architecture helps you to decouple your environments from the impacts of business change, and it helps move the business rules downstream and all that kind of stuff. So how do we get here from there? Well, that's going to be the subject of the upcoming slides. So we're going to we're going to move ahead in just a minute. But what are some of the questions that the Inman three-tier architecture brings to mind? Well, how do I handle real-time feeds? I still need some sort of solution to handle real-time feeds going into the staging area. Uh, do I need raw data in my data warehouse? Or does it need to be conformed? Does it need to be business usable? How do I build this? This being the data warehouse in rapid succession. How do I build and add on and augment the data warehouse? How do I build it fast and agile, right? We want to deliver in two to three week time frames. Still have the question, how do I handle big data in this kind of an architecture? How do I handle unstructured or semi or multi-structured data, right? Where does my mousetrap go? Again, the question is, what do I do when I have an appliance or I have a need for an appliance, a streaming appliance or a, a flat wide appliance or a big table appliance or a NoSQL appliance? What do I do? Where do I put it? How do I augment my system's design, right? How do I mitigate the cost of raw data storage? Do I continually store history in a persistent staging area or do I rely on this new middle tier data warehouse to do the job, right? How do I tie value to data so it becomes an asset to my business? Notice that question uh, doesn't or shouldn't exist in the two tier architecture. And the reason is there's a difference between data warehousing and information warehousing. It's subtle, but it's not something that Kimball has covered very well, much less the rest of the industry. So let's start with step one, split the business rules. And really what this is about is about taking data and turning it into information. What we really want to do is live with data in the staging area, and that's raw data that looks like the source systems. And we want to live with raw data in the data warehouse. Notice it is a data warehouse, not an information warehouse. And I want to make that point very, very clear. So enterprise data warehouse really should be raw data, and we should be loading the good, the bad, and the ugly. In other words, 100% of the data from the source system, 100% of the time, obviously within scope. You've got to pay attention to scope. So at an executive level, we want to then say, OK, we need to treat this data as an asset to the business. But before we get ahead of ourselves, we split these business rules into two categories, hard and soft business rules. The hard rules are any rule that does not change content of individual fields or the grain of individual fields. Okay, and examples are data type alignment, uh, normalization or denormalization, and then of course tagging or adding system fields, uh, load dates, record sources, sequence numbers, that kind of stuff, and possibly deduplication. All of this kind of thing are considered hard rules, and they can occur on the way into the staging area, or they can occur on the way from the stage to the vault, or they can occur in both places. They do not introduce any latency for the data on the way into your enterprise data warehouse because they're not running any interpretation and they're not relying on outside external data sets or any other source systems for their for their information processing and so this really decouples the business rules from the technology of storing data in a historical data warehouse so soft rules are of course any rule that changes or interprets data or changes the grain of the data. So you can think of this as turning data into information. Now we really shouldn't call data marts data marts anymore. We should call them information marts because really that's what we're trying to achieve at the end of the day is an information mart, 
a data mart is really at the raw level. If you're using system-based or source system-based raw data that's auditable, then you have a data mart. Otherwise, you've got an information mart. So examples of soft rules are concatenating name fields or standardizing addresses or even computing monthly sales So, or adding new computed fields. Sometimes some of these soft rules might even be a filter where you issue a where clause that says get me only the data that meets this criteria. So you're eliminating some of the data from the query or from the from the information on the on the output side. So these are soft rules and these should be really in the hands of the business. And the closer to the business we can move these soft rules or these interpretations, uh, the better and more enabled the business becomes in terms of what we call self-service or managed self-service BI. And we'll cover that in another video as well. So step two, allow for real time. We've got to be able to get real time into this environment. And in this particular case, what that means is introduction of either a business rules engine or the ESB, the Enterprise Service Bus. It could also be called the SOA, the Service Oriented Architecture. And because we have moved the soft rules downstream from the data warehouse, which is the middle tier there, we can now process raw data coming in at real time whenever it's ready and store it in a historical format inside the data warehouse. And then we can do what's called delayed processing by moving those soft rules into the data mart or the information mart layer downstream. Step three, we need to be able to handle unstructured or big data. Now, this is where we get into the architecture change. We're handling Excel, we're handling Word, we're handling uh, XML files or graph files or JSON files or, or email content. We're going to add NoSQL, some sort of NoSQL solution. We're going to augment. And now you notice it crosses multiple components of the architecture. It sits in the staging area. It sits as part of the enterprise data warehouse. And some of that information may actually be turned from data into information as a result of a MapReduce program. And we end up with statistics that store in the information marts. The only way to really key these components or to tie them to the structured world is to use something called hash keys. And that's the technological side of it. And that kind of thing is where I dive deep into the training classes in the, uh, in the Learn Data Vault site where I go uh, in depth and I teach your people how or I teach you how to use hash keys and I teach you how to build these solutions so that they work together. But for the executives out there, it's really all about augmenting your relational environment, keeping that sunk cost or that investment that you have in your existing systems and augmenting it in a rapid or agile fashion. So this is what you end up with. Uh, Data Vault 2.0 architecture is really this architecture. And it also includes the widgets. Where do I put my widgets and what kind of widgets do I have? We've got cubes and in-memory widgets and appliances and analytic tooling, but they all fit in the information mart space today. Um, they don't really fit in the enterprise class data warehouse solve problem solving space there's there's not really yet a, an advancement in that space uh, we also add some master data applications we add write back uh, capabilities again the idea is to have the business users begin to manage their own bi solutions and the information they see coming out of the information marts and then from there of course we want to add on this is the new uh, way you want to look at concept modeling and ontology modeling and taxonomy modeling and these are innovations that really put some of these data modeling tasks or information modeling tasks back in the hands of business users again it's about self-service or managed self-service bi and and really helping us in it understand how you want to see the value of your data or how you want to turn your data into information to get it into the marts in the right place. So with that said, how do we define an enterprise data warehouse and a data mart now that we've looked at a three-tier architecture using the Data Vault 2.0 architecture as a baseline, which is what you just were seeing. Uh, the enterprise data warehouse is defined according to not only Bill Inman, but the Data Vault uh, architecture and standards as a historical notice non-volatile raw data now this is important is raw data 
integrated by business key and that's a fundamental change to the way we do data warehousing uh, the whole premise is that it's auditable by nature and it's defined to contain data not information so this is the nature of the enterprise data warehouse that you want to build especially if your your team is going to end up being agile and you want to deliver quickly and all that kind of thing the data mart which really should be called the information mart is defined to be any data the end user that would be you has access to can manipulate and update like an excel spreadsheet for instance create and apply may be auditable but in most cases it usually isn't the apply portion is what you write back so you change a hierarchy you change a formula you want to check that formula in and you want the rest of the data marts that are being built to use that formula so you want to distribute it or deploy it and so that's really where you get into the managed self-service bi notions but it is defined to contain information thank you for sitting with me in this presentation and i hope to see you in the next presentation that uh, that i produce